I don't know the statistics of how many people a year commit suicide and they've been trying to do work to make it harder um, for pedestrians to jump. We're hoping to get closer to the walls and see if we can find anything paranormal. I think I got an orb. Who oh, it is? What? I heard, oh my god. I did too. Did you hear that? I did. What? I totally heard, oh my god. We later went back and checked Kirk's recorder, and this is what we picked up. What? I did too. I heard, oh my god. Yeah, I did too. No. You heard it too? Oh, yeah. I heard it first. Yeah. Because it was right over my left shoulder. I was shooting. I was videotaping you when that happened. No one was behind you. I may have caught that. Great. So that's evidence, right? Yeah, because I assumed I was going to come out here and see a couple of people, and the guy, that was guy's voice. There's no video. Why would someone here say, oh my god? Yeah, I got, I'm getting orbs. Come on. Uh, no. Okay. Nobody in the car. Yeah, I thought for sure I'd look out here and see somebody right behind us because it was right over my left shoulder when, when I heard it. With no one around, we could not debunk this disembodied voice. I wish I'd brought my lights. I'm not getting anything in here, it's all... You have night shot? You have night shot? This doesn't without those lights, I don't think. Oh, there's one over there. Here. An orb is a ball of light that is often captured in photographs. See, one right there. Although it may be paranormal, it is often not substantial evidence to support paranormal activity because it is often debunked by investigators because it could be dust reflecting off the that flash one, of the right camera. There. Looks very different. I think there's one right there. That's an orb, yeah. It is important to take even more photographs to see if an orb is consistent in the photos. If an orb is moving left to right or up to down as if it is an entity, then that may suggest paranormal activity. Our next investigation was at the Queen Anne Hotel, one of the most haunted hotels in America. This paranormal hotspot in San Francisco is most known for apparition sightings of little girls. The most haunted room in this hotel is room 410, which there are many reports of sheets being put on people while they're falling asleep. While we were having our conversation in the lobby, Kirk left his recorder out in case there were any potential EVPs. Like, what do you guys do, and why do you guys do what you do? So I, I had seen a few different ghosts growing up, and um, he never believed me when I, I told him. Sometimes I would, I would feel things and not, you know, um, different, like goosebumps, you know, your hair standing on end, or, or have some feelings. So once he heard the voice um, at our house, we um, started researching the paranormal even more. And uh, I don't know, you never know what you're going to get. That's what makes it interesting. For me, it was always something uh, that was really intriguing, but I never believed it. I heard a million stories, and I guess until you encounter something yourself, it's never real to you. So what happened to you that day? Well, I've told this story a million times about how uh, I woke up one morning. It was just my wife and I in the in the house. Uh, I decided I'm I'm going to try to keep this tuned, so I, I'm going to need to record it. So I put my cell phone on the coffee table in the morning, about 6:30 in the morning, and uh, I hit record. Start humming the tune, and as I take a breath in between 
humming the melody, uh, I hear a little girl laugh in, in my face. And, and I at first tried not to believe it. And then eventually I had to stop the recorder and listen back to see if it actually was, had re been recorded. And it had, and uh, it floored me. We picked up multiple EVPs in just the span of an hour. The first EVP we found just made an odd sound. It is uh, being gathered right now. It is uh, being gathered right now. The second EVP doesn't make sense and is quite vulgar. The third EVP was while Kirk was talking, and it knows something it shouldn't. And I at first tried not to believe it. And... Eerily, it knows Kirk's name, and it's making reference to something violent. And I at first tried not to believe it. And... This episode will be following Kirk around the hotel. Here, he's armed with a camera with special LED lights mounted to pick up apparitions. Also, he'll be using his recorder in case we catch any more EVPs. Come on, Frank, you know that was weird. Mm. That one's weird. <laughs> Can you do that for us again? What? Can they do that for us again? Yeah, how about doing that again? Can we send that back? Kirk was walking around at 2 in the morning, and we didn't see anyone on our floor. This was definitely an odd occurrence that could be paranormal. Said you wanted to film the convention. We took the elevator and discovered it's really loud. So was the elevator just waiting for us on our floor? At the end of this leg of our investigation, we did not discover any new EVPs. However, we did find a really creepy doll. Stay tuned for the next part of our investigation at the Queen Anne Hotel. There is more evidence to be seen. We'll be using an EMF detector to try and find the source of some crazy cold spots that are happening in our room. You're freezing. Hmm? Is your jacket on? You're freezing? I would say take the thermometer to her. Amy is getting some serious chills, and we're trying to find out where they're coming from. 2.2. But the temperature's 69. Yeah, I don't, right now I don't. 
2.3. Like I'm getting the shivering sensation, but it's not cold. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this goosebumps, but it's not mm -hmm. cold like I was feeling. It's electricity more. Yeah. It's actually warmer, 69.9, 70, but uh, it's up to 2.2 milligrams. Mm -hmm. I mean, the electrical field isn't changing. I mean, yeah, my cell phone's in the bathroom. I'm not introducing any new electrical devices to it. I mean, we don't have anything around us, but it's changing. It's zero. You wait, you held it and it went to zero. It went to zero. How did it jump from three? Now it's back to three. How do you explain that? I can't. I've never seen it do That's that before. Weird. None of us have ever seen an EMF detector act in the way it was behaving this night. It goes away. It's gone again. For this episode of Hitchhiker Ghost, we'll be talking about our findings from the Queen Anne Hotel that you haven't seen yet, and we got some incredible stuff. And for this one, uh, it's going to be more than just me. We have Amy and Kirk here to talk about our findings. Uh, first off, there was a tour going on in the hotel, and we were videotaping it and recording it, and we picked up some crazy stuff. Kirk, you got the two craziest EVPs I've ever heard. One of them especially crazy to me. Tell me about those two. Yeah, some pretty good ones on, on this trip. Uh, the one I was really excited to share with you is the one that uh, I came across that actually said your name. First and last. And, you know, a lot of times on the different shows, you'll hear, you know, maybe one or the other. This one actually said your first and last name. That's a pretty impressive one. I've heard a lot of EVPs. Yeah, I still can't sleep over that one. <laughs> I bet. Uh, uh, yeah, and the, there's another one, too, that that sounds extremely clear, but um, like most EVPs, it doesn't make any sense. This one's actually a little more tame than the ones we're used to hearing, but uh, still impressive nonetheless because it's extremely clear. I think anyone would class uh, classify it as a Class A EVP. What's that? Well, I was videotaping in the lobby, and right now we're looking at the video of me, of what I got in the lobby, this apparition right here. What do you think of that one? This one, we showed to a few people, and a few thought it might be a reflection off of a car or something outside. But when we went back and reviewed the time of day and where the sun would be, and then the trajectory of the moving orb, I think it's paranormal. The word is trajectory. What did I say? I said trajection. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this next one we got while we were sleeping. Um, generally, when we do investigations and stay in hotels, we'll record overnight. And uh, this one's coming in. Uh, it's just a whisper, so we had to boost the audio a bit. This next one is a little girl that seems to be following us around. We might make another compilation video of everything we got from this little girl, but here it is. This little girl we hear everywhere. I think at every one of Kirk and Amy's investigations, they get this little girl, so keep an ear out for her in the future. Keep it right here on Hitchhiker Ghost for more exciting paranormal evidence. Kirk has something he wants to say before we sign off. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk's shy. He's the shyest <laughs> of the bunch, guys. I'm good. He's good. On this episode of Hitchhiker Ghost, we'll be talking about our latest investigation at the Myrtles Plantation in Louisiana. Amy's here, Kirk's here. Tell me about what you guys found. So we'll start outside before we actually got inside the house around the grounds where we have uh, a blue orb that is traveling and you can see from the trees and the bushes that this one's moving in sort of an erratic 
path. It doesn't look like a bug. It doesn't look like dust. There's one on the bottom, one in the middle, and one on top. Um, yeah, it's taken three pictures in a row. I would say five seconds between each picture. Maybe yeah. less. So within five seconds, this thing travels from the ground to the middle of the screen to the top of the screen in a definite erratic pattern. In this next photo, there's an orb and then it seems to have turned into an apparition. The next picture I took in succession will zoom in for you to see an outline of... What do you think it looks like, Tyler? Um, that looks evil, like it could be a demon. And it actually looks like there's a tail coming out or something connecting it to that blue light. So uh, that that's scary. Maybe that blue light's a portal from another dimension. It, it's an interesting figure and it has human-like features to it but it doesn't seem human for sure and you guys um got some evps right after getting that picture right in that area right around yeah. the swamp when we're walking around uh by ourselves uh, we went off on our own yeah we we came across voices that aren't in english and it's interesting because you know, to my untrained ear, it sounds Native American. I know the story of the plantation is that it is and was a Native American burial site. I can't even make that out. What's it saying? I don't know. That's the it's, whole point. Yes, his history points to those could be the Native Americans buried underneath the Myrtle Plantation. Uh, but there is something else that uh, is terrifying, in my opinion, in terms of an EVP. Can we hear that one? This one is uh, when we're actually in the house and uh, we hear a really loud scream. And we try to discount it at first, but when we listen back on it, to the EVP that follows the loud scream that we heard, there's another voice. So let me play that. Yeah, so the first one was a disembodied voice. The second one is all EVP. And uh, the interesting, interesting thing about that is that uh, the scream sounds almost identical to the first scream. And so it's interesting to note that nobody in the room was talking at this point. You hear this incredibly loud scream. That no one heard. <laughs> that no one heard. And it sounds like right next to the microphone. Yeah. On the recorder. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a voice coming from inside the room, but nobody was speaking at the time. And then it's followed by another EVP that says, I need some help with this. I need some help with this. Wow. So it's like a mother reacting to a screaming child. And this happened to be in the nursery of the house, the former nursery. Oh, go figure. The Fanny Williams room. Well, I'll tell you something. If I ever heard a baby make that noise, I am running to the nearest exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> and we almost ran after we heard the first one. Thankfully, we didn't hear the second one, or we might have. Yeah. We would have been sleeping in our car. Yeah. <laughs> that but been... we did sleep in that, that bedroom that night. We have some interesting uh, EVPs to play for you right now. You know, the night on our first night, in the Fannie Williams room and I was joking around with uh, Amy and said uh, you know uh, tonight you're the camera person and I didn't get any response from her but I did get a response from someone else that wasn't in the room your camera person you want to be a different person no. okay so you hear Amy say no eventually but in between me telling her she's the camera person there's some other woman's voice and it says tonight i'm the scary person and that that one really freaked me out when i uh when i heard it for the first time that's for sure and i don't like other people answering for me your camera person you want to be a different person then while we were sleeping we got this recording 
And you'll yeah. notice it's total silence uh, before and afterwards because uh, we're deep in sleep. And uh, it's easy to see these EVPs when you're when you're checking them later on because it's the only sound wave blip that you'll see on the screen. And it says, ooh, wake the baby. <laughs> We captured quite a few orbs in our room. Some people have stated that this blue room is a vortex for spiritual activity. So in this picture, we're not seeing any orbs, and then all of a sudden there's a flurry. In this next set of pictures, you can see me sitting in this armchair, I'm checking my phone, and all of a sudden there's a huge one on my knee or almost sitting in my lap. And uh, we see in another photo uh, moving orbs, and uh, this one in particular, extremely bright one. And, uh, you know, people a lot of times will say about the orbs that they're dust, but the, I think when you get, get things like this, you can very easily discount that uh, they would be considered to be a reflection off a piece of dust. Amy, you talk to me about uh, more orbs they got outside of photographs. We actually got video of orbs moving in uh, quite a few of the rooms at the plantation. The first one we want to talk about is we were investigating with some couples we met who were renting the rooms next to us. And this video we have an orb bouncing, uh, looks like it's sort of falling from the ceiling, but it bounces off um, Darren's sh shoulder here. Uh, we're going frame by frame here. You just watch it bounce right off. And right afterwards, uh, so whoever was videotaping, I think Kirk, were you videotaping that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. your put your thumb. Thank goodness he didn't put your uh, hand in front of it like two seconds earlier. Yeah, that was, that was close. But yeah, it, just panning around and just about ready to turn off the lights. And right before that, you see this orb shoot, shoot into him. Right after we turn off the lights, um, while Darren is asking questions, we got an EVP uh, that seems to be interacting with us being in that bedroom. I think y'all are full of crap. If room. you're if you're here, come close to this little green light right here. Well, sometimes you just hear stuff that doesn't make sense to what we're doing, and this EVP says we're in the bed with him. I think y'all are full of crap. If room. you're if you're here, come close to this little green light right here. So your your full spectrum camera set up on the bottom of the stairs, watching the stairs in case any activity happens. It just so happens that you got activity and whatever it was, the paranormal activity knocked over your camera. Yeah, I, at first uh, I wasn't sure if I had set up the camera properly or not, but what you know, I saw it when it fell. It startled me and everybody else in the room. But you know, I was a little skeptical at first as to whether that was. Uh, you know, due to other reasons, but the other pieces of information that we gathered after reviewing the evidence made it more significant. The orb following the individual down the stair right before the camera falls, and then the EVP we captured that says touch it right when the camera falls. Uh, Amy was doing her normal, taking multiple photos, three or four at a time, and five seconds in between, and she picked up this. Here's the first picture. You can see right here, there's something starting to like come up, a shadowy figure. And then in the next photograph, you see this. Um, Amy and Kirk thinks it looks like a witch. All right, on to new EVPs. Uh, for, as I've mentioned, during the Queen Anne investigation review, uh, there's this little girl that follows us around everywhere, and uh, we picked her up here at the Myrtle's plantation. She flat out says, "Don't f the girl." <laughs> it's pretty, pretty graphic. The next CVP we got was what seems to be a boy of African descent get slapped and then complain about it makes a lot of sense because Myrtle's is a plantation. Oh, 
the next EVP they got, unfortunately, is when um, some other investigators who were there were talking, but it is an EVP. <laughs> she flat out says, hello, are you seeing me? And it just happens to be at this mirror, which many people think they have they get a picture of a ghost in in it but it's actually a smudge on on the glass that looks like a face believe it or not this is probably about half of the evidence we got but we just wanted to share the best of definitely more than enough to confirm this place is haunted we're going to be doing um, not an evidence review for our next round of videos we're actually going to do a hardcore investigation all right with uh, thanks for watching thanks for, yeah yeah come back see you next time see you next time